Eagles Entertainment. Guys, that doesn't happen very often in the league, this league, right? Where you physically just dominate somebody. That's what we talked about right at the beginning, right? Going out there and playing football. Because when you play football, it's about dominating somebody physically. And we did that both up front on offense, ran the ball, 236 yards. <laughs> And sometimes in this sport, as we all know, all it takes is a big time round yeah. to get going, right? Yeah. That's sometimes that's all it takes. This week's practice was so sharp. This week's soul pra practice was had so much intensity. This, this week's walkthrough and meetings had so much detail. Mm. That's the formula. Enjoy this one now, tonight, right? <laughs> round nine starts tomorrow, all right? Hey, the goals, it's hard to win every week. Great team win. Offense and defense both showed up. We put it together here and there. Let's keep this thing rolling. Yeah, man. That's yes, right. Keep that roots going, baby! <laughs> roots on three! One, two, three! Roots! And we welcome Eagles everywhere to the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro with you here at the Novacare Complex. You heard Nick Sirianni's post-game yeah what a win in Detroit speech. Hoping for another one of those this weekend when the Los Angeles Chargers come to town. And in this episode of the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group, we will have our first look at the LA Chargers, a 4-3 and three team. Chris Harry from Chargers.com joins us with a really uh, in-depth look at what's happening with a Chargers team that started the season cruising 4-1. and one. Losses to Baltimore and New England have made things a little bit sticky in L.A. with the Chargers. Got a great episode for you. We're going to hear from Eagles legend Jamal Jackson. Um, wow, I mean, what a career. Undrafted out of Delaware State and... Ends up playing with the Eagles from 2003 through 2011. He'll be honored this weekend as the honorary captain at the team's salute to service game at Lincoln Financial Field. So a lot of festivities happening around the team this weekend. We begin the Eagles Insider Podcast with a visit from, well, a player who's been doing it the hard way. And I hope you get a chance to really enjoy his story. Marcus Epps was not offered a scholarship coming out of high school. He walked on at Wyoming. Marcus Epps drafted by the Vikings in 2019. And then, uh, you know, he comes to Philadelphia and uh, plays well. He's playing not only well, he's playing like a starter. Now, Anthony Harris is back and he'll likely start on Sunday. But the Eagles have gone with Marcus Epps here the last couple of weeks. And he has performed and that's really encouraging. And that's really what you want. You want your players to develop, to get better, and he has certainly done that. So, without further ado, uh, the Eagles welcoming in Marcus Epps, and he welcomes in the Eagles Insider Podcast. Marcus, um, really interested in talking to you. Um, first of all, kind of talk about your crazy NFL journey. I mean, I don't think people can really appreciate uh, walking on to college, um, becoming a captain at Wyoming, being drafted, being traded, everything that goes through it. I know you've got a, a, a young child at home. I mean, what is what have the last few years been like for you? How would you put it all in perspective? Yeah, it's been a little crazy. I mean, like you said, my journey always been uh, kind of been the underdog. Um, always been that, that guy that's been overlooked. But, you know, I've always believed in myself and, you know, that's the only, that's always the only person I ever felt that I've needed to believe in me is me. So, you know, I've just always put my head down and kept grinding and, um, you know, that's kind of what, that's what led me here. Um, you know, and I'm just, you know, just getting started, just got to not getting complacent, got to keep working every day, taking it day by day and make sure I'm putting in the work in every day to keep getting better and better. Where, where does it come from though? Why, why do you have that drive? Where, 
Um, I, I know I saw in your bio that your first job was with your, I guess, your grandmother in her law firm. I mean, what was it like the people around you that kind of gave you that, that inner confidence? Yeah, I mean, you know, my grandparents um, and both my parents, they're all, you know, that's what they instilled in me is just always working. Um, you know, if you want something in life, you got to go get it. Nobody's going to give it to you. So, you know, that's what they've always instilled in me is to, you know, to go go shoot for your dreams and work hard for it. Um, and, you know, that's kind of how just being overlooked and being the underdog, you know, coming out of high school with no offers, um, that's that's just what's driven me, you know, this whole time. Um, so that when, you know, when I walked on to Wyoming, that's what was pushing me to work, to get extra work in, um, make sure I kept grinding. And I think that's what ultimately led me to be being named captain there was people saw how hard I worked, um, went out, you know, earned for being a four year starter and even being drafted six round, um, you know, still underdogs, still have to work and go scratch and claw and fight for everything. So, you know, that's just kind of the mentality um, that I've always had and, you know, always will have. I mean, if you make five straight Pro Bowls, do you think you're always going to – you still think you'll always have that mentality? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just – at this point, it's just it's just in me, man. I mean, you know, it's been a long, long journey. Um, you know, I don't ever have any complacency in me. I'm always working toward what's next, you know, the amount of work that I put in, that's that's where I get a lot of my confidence from is because I know I put the work in. Um, you know, I know in the off season I'm working harder than everybody else. So, you know, that's what that's what gives me confidence that I can go out there and play and that I belong at this level. Do you think the NFL market is, is more success is based more on your physical skill or your mental preparation, or do you think it's a, a kind of a fifty fifty split? Um, I think at this level, it's it comes more more down to your mentality, um, your preparation, like you said, and you know just because you know at this level, everybody basically everybody has those physical traits. Um, they're elite athletes, but it comes down to you know who's preparing, who's who's working hard, who's mentally mentally there, watching film, um, understands the playbook, understand understands concepts, um, and just kind of has that feel for the game within that you've also basically i guess had to learn three different three different defenses the minnesota defense uh mm -hmm. jim schwartz's defense now jg's defense and i'm not sure fans really understand is there a big difference from one defense to the next to the next um there's differences here and there i think once you pick up one it makes it easier um to pick up the next because you know a lot of things are the same um maybe just different wording here and there um, or different ways of playing the same coverage. Um, but I think, I think once you learn one, it kind of makes it easier and easier to continue to learn the next and the next, because, you know, nobody's, nobody's really doing anything brand new. I mean, coverages, everybody runs, you know, certain coverages. So, you know, that makes it easier. Once you learn one, it makes it easier to pick up the next. Okay, so, be, so, so, so to be a great safety in the NFL, what does it take, Marcus? What, what are the different attributes that you need? Uh, what is the skill set that you believe you must have? Um, I think you got to have a combination of, you know, being able to play in space and being able to play in the box as well. Um, you got to be able to cover. Um, but when it's time, you got to be able to fit the run, get in your run gaps, um, bring your hard hat and go play physical as well. Um, I believe the safe, uh, safeties, you know, they need to set the tone uh, for the defense. And you also need to be really smart. You need to be the communicator back there, be able to make sure everybody's on the same page on the defense. So, there's, you know, there's a combination of things. I saw in your bio that one of your favorite players of all time was Troy Palomalu, who, along with Doc and, and others, really reinvented the safety position. Are you a student of the game that you understand just how much – that position has changed through the many years of the NFL? Yeah, definitely. I mean, guys like Troy Polamalu, um, Brian Dawkins, you know, Sean Taylor, Ed Reed, you know, I feel like those are the guys, you know, for my generation at least, that kind of, you know, the guys that everybody wanted to be like. And then, you know, as it kind of, as I kind of got older, you know, Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, um, Harrison Smith. But I feel like it's, 
you know, it is, like you said, it is a different time. I feel like back then um, there was more in the box and out of the box safeties where I feel like now you, you kind of have to be more interchangeable um, depending on your scheme. But most schemes, I feel like you have to be more interchangeable, be able to do both um, a little more than maybe in the past. Marcus, what do you think you're doing well in this defense? Well, I'm just doing my job. I mean, you know, that's that's the mindset I have. You know, if you do your job, plays are going to come to you. Um, you know, obviously you're never going to make every play, but you just got to every play focus on doing your job. If you execute your job, um, the plays will come to you, and you have to make those plays. It's up to you to make those plays when they come. That the coaching staff is showing so much confidence in you, what does that mean for you? Yeah, I mean, it means a lot. It let's, lets me know that my hard work isn't going unnoticed. Um, also lets me know that I'm doing the right things. But, you know, on the same count, it helps me to never get complacent, like I said. Um, make sure I'm keeping striving for more because there's a lot of things that, you know, I need to improve on and that I can improve on. So, you know, I just got to make sure I'm working every day to improve on those things and continue to get better and better as a player. As you get ready for the Chargers, what do you see from their offense? Yeah, they're really good offense. I mean, starts with their quarterback, obviously, Herbert, really good quarterback, young guy, um, you know, up-and-coming guy who's proven that he can possibly be one of the best in this league here soon. So, um, you know, to go along with that, they have, you know, skill position players. They have talent all around. Um, receivers and running backs talented. Tight ends are talented. So, you know, we're going to – it's going to be a lot bigger challenge this week um, than we had last week. Um, but it's nothing we can't handle. Um we just have to make sure that we're coming in with the same attitude and mindset that we had last week. Um, you know, we have to come in, you know, ready on our P's and Q's and ready to go um, play a physical game of football and execute our, all the details. And then the last one for you, Marcus, how, how much fun is it? I mean, it, as you talked about, it's been quite a journey. This is the reward. So how much fun are you having? Yeah, it's a lot of fun out there, man. I mean, this is what, what I love to do, what I've loved to do since – since I was a kid. Um, so, you know, I just got to, like I said, just got to keep keep it going, man. Um, you know, I just got to make sure I'm improving every day. Um, you know, can't ever get that feeling of you've arrived. Um, got to always continue to push for more, push for more, and push for more. Um, and then, you know, like you said, then you just reap the rewards of your hard work. Yeah, and you just, you're never going to let down, are you? Nah, never. Got to always keep going. Okay, thanks, Marcus, for your time. Thanks for joining us here on the podcast. Uh, Now let's find out about the Chargers. Chris Harry, Chargers.com. What's going on in L.A. with Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, Joey Bosa, Derwin James. They've got some star recognition. Will be a great game on Sunday. Chris Harry, Chargers.com, with our first look at the L.A. Chargers. Chris Harry, thanks so much for joining. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the L.A. Chargers. Um, How do you feel about this team? Uh, It's been an interesting road here. Things were you were cruising along, all of a sudden Baltimore happened, and it hasn't been the same since then. What is what is the state of the L.A. Chargers right now? Well, yeah, you're right. They've hit a little bit of adversity uh, against two good teams, though. You know, Baltimore and New England. Before that, Dave, they had a three-game winning streak. Justin Herbert, 12 total touchdowns and zero turnovers. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed the last three games is just the, the time of possession has been extremely lopsided in the opponent's favor. So, you know, th- there's been a combination of injuries, um, but some great defensive game plans from both Baltimore and New England. And this is a big test for the Chargers to see if, if they can improve to five and three and get themselves back into this conversation in the AFC. You know, I, I said this so many times, every team in the NFL is going to face bouts of adversity. And right now the Chargers have their, their first bout of it with, with the new coaching staff. And, you know, we'll see how they respond on Sunday against the Eagles. All right. So tell me how good is Herbert? He's really good. <laughs> He's really good. And I think that, that was evident in his rookie year, Dave. I mean, uh, the the way he played kind of thrust into action going back to that, that week two game against Kansas City last year and how he was able to just really get the guys to, to buy in and believe in him towards the end of the year with a four-game winning streak and obviously winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. Um, you know, but, but at the same time, this is a, a new operation. This is a 
a new offensive scheme, a new head coach, and then, you know, frankly, a new defensive scheme for the defensive guys. So um, I'm not saying they're starting over, but, you know, there is still a lot to, to pick up and to learn and to, to grasp. And we're only in week eight, week nine. So, you know, the Eagles are going through the same thing with a new coach and, and, and trying to figure out how they want to play football. Um, but, but Justin's been fantastic. I mean, don't let these last two games fool you. Uh, he's been exceptional, and um, he, he usually doesn't make the same mistake twice. Um, and, I, and I think this is just the, the maturation of a quarterback in, in year two, you know, um, figuring out how teams are going to play you and adjusting to that. Yeah, it's really interesting. Everybody expected to happen all at once. And I guess after that rookie season, you just expect that the sky is the limit for Justin. And, you know, from from an outsider standpoint, we're looking at a, a, a skill set, a skill position group of Eckler, outstanding in what he does, which is everything. Great receivers, Jared Cook at tight end. Um, from a skill position group, Chris, do you think this is just as complete as you'll find in the league? I'd say so. And, you know, last year, the the connection with Keenan Allen was immediate. And, and you could tell just how how much or how locked in, rather, uh, Justin and Keenan were. And now, you know, beginning of this year, the first five, six games at least, uh, Mike Williams was the guy, you know, to compliment Keenan Allen. And in many ways, he, he was the go-to guy. Uh, he was having an all-pro type start to the season, slowed down the last couple of weeks, but – you're right, Dave. I mean, when you have Keenan Allen, one of the best route runners in football, and then Mike Williams playing the way he's been playing, a guy like Austin Eckler, who I don't even really consider a running back. He's just an offensive weapon, um, what he can do coming out of the backfield, catching the ball, as well as rushing it. Uh, Jared Cook, Donald Parham. Uh, one of the things that Justin did so well last year was he got everybody involved. I think there's six different guys that have caught a touchdown from him. Uh, Joshua Palmer, the rookie from Tennessee, being the latest um, last Sunday. So, you know, as far as skill position players, you know, I would put them up with with close to anybody in the league in terms of talent from top to bottom. Chris, the, the Chargers have also had some injuries up front. I mean, how much has that reconfiguring the offensive line really kind of been a challenge to to get everybody back, you know, on the same page and and playing at that high level, how, how much of an impact have those injuries had? Well, I'd say they have an impact really on, on both lines too, Dave. I mean, you know, the, the Chargers have, have struggled against the run this year, and, you know, Justin Jones, probably their best run stopper, was out for a bulk of those games to start the year. And, uh, you know, Justin Jones came back, and they, they improved. The, the Patriots still ran the ball 39 times last Sunday, but they were better against the run. And then offensively, it's hard when you lose – two starters on the right side of the line. I mean, Rashawn Slater has been fantastic. Now, he, he's not just the best left tackle in football among rookies. He, he's up there, period. Um, Matt Filer, Corey Lindsley, the free agent addition from the Packers coming over. So that left side has been solid and sound. They've played 100% of the snaps. It's that right side where depth has been tested. And, uh, you know, like the Eagles, w- w- the injuries are going to strike different positions, and you have to – rely on your depth and adjust, maybe bring an extra blocker on the right side. Um, so I would say it's been tested on the right side and obviously on the defensive side, not having Justin Jones. I'm really intrigued based on the way the Eagles played last Sunday, 236 yards on the ground. Uh, with Justin Jones coming back, you know, how is that going to look? Is that going to decide the game? Is that going to be a big factor, this, this Eagles rushing attack? versus this Chargers run defense. I, I, that's, that's certainly a matchup I'm going to be looking at. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Look, I mean, it, it, Eagles have been trying to find that running game all year, and it really came together for them against the Lions. And you look on paper and you go, yeah, sure, run the football. Like, Chargers stop us. But we know there's a whole lot more involved in that. And, and the talent level with what you guys have with Adderley yeah. and with James at the safety positions, those two and what they do in the defense, can you kind of explain – how they're used and what kind of impact they have on, on what, uh, you know, the Chargers are trying to do defensively. Yeah, well, you know, this is the first year we've seen Nas Adderley and Derwin James on the field together. I remember when Nas was drafted a couple of years ago, um, Daniel Jeremiah said it best. He said, if you were to build a safety in a lab to complement Derwin James, it would be Nas Adderley. And, and they've played fantastic together. I mean, 
Derwin James, Brandon Silly said it earlier uh, in, in a press conference, he, he plays like five different positions for the team. He, he's all over the field. He lines up everywhere. Um, and I think it's just, it's a, a testament to how intelligent he is as a football player, but just how athletic and how gifted he is as a football player. So, you know, Darwin, you have no idea where he's going to line up. Uh, I, I think the one cause of concern here in LA right now is the, the two starting corners, Michael Davis and Asante Samuel Jr. Um, you know, as, as we talk, you know, they didn't practice and, and they both left the game on Sunday. Uh, Asante Samuel Jr. is in the concussion protocol. So, uh, you know, that's where I think it could get interesting for the Chargers is at the cornerback position. We know what, what you're going to get with, with Nas and Derwin. Um, those starting corners being out, that, that's something to watch certainly this week as we get to Sunday. And then finally, just give us a little preview of what Eagles fans can expect to see from Joey Bosa and, and the talents he brings off the edge. Man, well, you know what? I, I think Joey Bosa is probably going to be greeted by double teams and who knows, maybe even triple teams. We saw that uh, when he played the Ravens. Uh, Joey's just a special player, and, and it's not just the pass rushing. It's, it's against the run. Um, what he brings to the defensive line, I mean, it's rare, and, and there's only a handful of guys in the league that can do what Joey does. He really can wreck a game. Um, if, if he's in that zone and, and you allow him to find a one-on-one matchup or if he's able to beat a double team, Joey can certainly wreck a game. Now, it's up to the guys maybe on the other side, too, Yuchenna Nuosu, Kyler Fackrell, Jerry Tillery on the interior to continue to generate a pass rush because – you know Joey Bosa is going to step up, and even if he's not getting to the quarterback, he's going to demand double and triple teams, which uh, allows a lot of one-on-one opportunities for a lot of guys on that Bulls defensive line. Yeah, he certainly is going to be worth – it'll be worth watching him moving up and down the line of scrimmage and the Eagles' offensive tackles, Lane Johnson, Jordan Mailata, two formidable tackles. Great matchup to watch on Sunday. Chris, thank yeah. you so much. And uh, how about this final thing? third trip for the Chargers East, a factor or no? You know what? I, I don't know if it's that much of a factor in today's NFL, man, the, the way that these guys fly and travel. But I will say that that was the one thing that popped out to me when the schedule came out. Uh, to, to go to Washington week one and then to have, you know, a month in between going to Baltimore and then a few weeks in between going to Philly. I mean, that's that's quite the, uh, the frequent flyer miles going to the East Coast. So, I, I'm not sure if it, if, if it affects the team that much. It is a late game. It is daylight savings. Um, so I, I think the Chargers will be ready to play. I think they're, they're very well aware after coming off two losses, they, they got to try to get this one against the Eagles, uh, a team that's coming off a, a blowout win and probably a lot of momentum on their side. On Sunday, the Eagles will have former center Jamal Jackson as the honorary captain and uh, another player, This is kind of the theme here. Not drafted. Came on out of Delaware State. Spent his first year with the Eagles on the practice squad. Second season on injured reserve with a torn triceps. Walked into the middle of the 2005 season. Primetime game. Hank Fraley gets hurt. Jamal Jackson, it's your turn. So what happened? We'll find out. One-on-one here with Eagles legend Jamal Jackson. The Eagles have a big game on Sunday at Lincoln Financial Field against the Los Angeles Chargers. And the honorary captain for that day, a day that will salute to service for all of us, will be former Eagles center Jamal Jackson, who joins me, the legendary Jamal Jackson. Hey, Jamal, um, first of all, how are you? You look great. Um, It just seems like yesterday that you were playing center here. Uh, Does it feel like it's the time's gone by since your NFL career ended? It does, man. I mean, it feels like. It literally was yesterday, but, you know, <laughs> thankfully with um, injuries and such, it don't feel like yesterday. <laughs> how, how, you know, a guy who played in the NFL um, at the center position, a grueling position, um, you had some injuries, triceps at the time. I mean, how does your body yeah. feel after after so many years of playing the game at a grueling position? I mean, it's, it's holding up pretty well. You know, I have the occasional uh, checkups and surgeries and whatnot as far as shoulders, backs, arms, knees. So um, it takes a toll on you after a while. But, um, I mean, I'm walking. I'm in good health. 
So, you know, I'm ready to roll. <laughs> Those years were pretty darn good years, 2003 through 2011 with the Philadelphia Eagles. And Jamal, you took such a, a long path to get to the league. You weren't drafted out of Delaware State. Um, the Eagles found you. They brought you in. It took you a couple of years to get on the field. You had the practice squad experience in 2003. You, you had an injury in 2004. Uh, what did that early road teach you um, about making it at this level? Oh, man, just 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 push perseverance, uh, first and foremost. Uh, you know, uh, it was some trying times early on. You know, um, I didn't realize that I could even make it in this league when I first came in, you know, from Delaware State Small School. So, you know, early on, it was it was tough, you know, especially trying to get over the injuries and actually learning the playbook and the scheme and speed of the NFL. So, uh, like I said, with the injuries on top of that, made it a little bit difficult, but Thankfully enough, I had some people in my corners that um, actually pushed me along the way, like Juan Castillo and, you know, Big Red was a big supporter at the time. We will get to those two in just a minute, but I want to go back to your actual on-field regular season debut, a Monday night game at Lincoln Financial Field, 2005 <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. You're on the sidelines. You're the, you're the next man up, and you were called to be the next man in. Uh, Please take me through that experience. Do you remember what the feeling was like running onto the field, national television audience, full house in South Philly, and you're the guy? Of course. It was um, it was shocking, to say the least. <laughs> um, I, I didn't expect to, um, to, to actually be in that position. You know, it was a Monday night football game. Actually, I want to say it was like November 9th. So like a couple days after this game would be, you know, but... So many years ago, um, it was it, the jitters was there. My first actual play was a false start. So, <laughs> I mean, what a way to start off a, 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 a career. So, yeah, man, um, the, um, the bugs, the excitement, the jitters, it was all there. And that's what led to the false start that I had. <laughs> Jamal, you had a great relationship with Donovan. Um, what made him such a special quarterback, in your opinion? Um, here's attention to detail. Uh, we had this thing called dinner in the movie where we would stay after practice, um, you know, seven, eight, nine o'clock, go we'll watch film, try to break down, um, the other teams, uh, blitz packages and whatnot. And he was very meticulous in his approach. Like he would stay until the crack of dawn, like leave no stone unturned as far as our preparation goes. And that was one thing that I admired about him as a professional because he really wanted to detail his work so we could be at the best of our abilities come Sunday. Unfortunately, Donovan also had some injuries, was sent to the sidelines, and new quarterbacks came in. And, I mean, I guess part of your job, a big part of your job, was getting a new quarterback, whether it was Jeff Garcia or Mike McMahon or whoever it was, up to speed. How do you get a quarterback up to speed? How do you get a guy ready to go in this offense? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, well, I mean, I'm going to tell them what they told me. Just snap the ball, don't turn it over. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, that was the, that was the main thing. Like, just just don't turn the ball over and you'll be fine. But as far as the uh, the quarterbacks that I did play with, guys like Jeff Garcia, he was a veteran in this offense. So, you know, him coming in, he actually taught me more about it because he was already ingratiated in the West Coast offense. And when I was with Mike McMahon, it was more of uh, both of us learning on the job because – I didn't know what I was doing, and I'm quite sure he really knew what he was doing. So it was one of those things where we were just thrust into action and had to learn on the fly. But um, I would have to say, you know, just take care of the football. Don't turn it over. Jamal, you mentioned Juan Castillo. Uh, he is a legend, of course, in the NFL mm -hmm. as an offensive line coach. How instrumental was he to your success, and, and what makes him such a great coach? Well... Yeah, first and foremost, he, he believed in all of his players. Um, he believed in the top draft pick all the way down to the practice squad free agent guy. And that's what I loved about him. Like, he didn't, he was another one of those guys that didn't really cut any corners. Uh, I mean, I know you would see it sometime, Dave. You got, he got guys at practice before practice. Mm -hmm. um, usually kind of bending the rules a little bit of the CBA. <laughs> oh, he broke them. He just flat out broke them. Yeah, a, a, a couple times. So, um, yeah, that guy, he was just a tireless worker. And he kind of, um, you know, he has zoomed that up uh, amongst his players and the guys that he coached. I mean, one of the loudest uh, individuals on the field, you always hear Juan barking out commands and cadence and, and things of that nature. 
And I just adored the guy because of his passion and his work ethic. Yeah, I mean, just a tremendous player. Once he got his hooks in you, you were a better football oh, player it, for it. Of course, of course. Uh, Andy Reid still doing it in Kansas City, Super Bowl winner now. His program clearly works. Why do right. you? Why? Why is that, Jamal? Why is what Andy Reid does, and it's the same thing every day, every week, every month, every year. Why does it work? I think it's the the uh, the repetition like, that you always hear in what like, coaches' speech or in football in meetings or whatever. You always hear over and over and over and over, and that's like the goal of like teaching football. You have to, you know, repeat the things that you're good at in order to be great at it. And that's what they did, you know. And Andy was one of those guys. He didn't change year in and year out. The meetings, the structure, the practices, they were pretty much the same. So you kind of knew what you was getting yourself into. And that's what I think made him, you know, a great respected coach around the league. You made it, Jamal. Uh, guys who are not drafted in this league, I mean, the percentage of players who actually last in the league for more than a year or two, is, it's infinitesimal. So, you know, looking back, why did you make it? What, what, what made you the one? Well, I think um, my past had a little bit to do with it, uh, being as though I came from a uh, not-so-great area upbringing, so to speak. You know, there was a lot of islands back in Miami when I grew up. Uh, a lot of negativity, so to speak. And I, me personally, I didn't want to go back to that. You know, once I um, actually got a chance to go to school in Delaware, that kind of opened my eyes up to a different way of living. You know, it was a different environment. Um, so with that being said, I was like, you know, I'm going to try to put Miami in my rear view, and at least the part that I remember, and, you know, try to stick this thing out. And uh, fortunately for, enough for me, it worked out with the help of guys, like I said, Juan Castillo, and even some of the players on the team that kind of helped me along the way, Trey Thomas, John Runyon, um, even Hank Fraley, you know, <laughs> Honey Buns, as they, as they would call him. You know, he was a guy that when when I was coming up and he was a starter, he would always help the younger guys, the young um, centers, to, like, pick up blitz calls and how to identify it. So it was a lot of people that helped me along the way. Love it. Hey, Jamal, tell me, now that football has been done for a minute here, uh, what is life like for Jamal Jackson? Life is trying to raise girls, which <laughs> is, huh, it's hard. It's hard. Man. It's kind of like it's kind of like football because I'm repeating myself over and over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> like, so parenting is tough, man. Um, I give my wife a lot of credit because – when I was playing, I didn't have to deal with any of this. <laughs> like now, it's like I'm checking homework. I'm making sure rooms are clean. I'm doing like the day to day stuff. I mean, I also have my businesses on the side as far as my trucking company. My wife owns a salon, and we do have some uh, some real estate properties down in Miami. So it's a lot of things that keep us busy, so to speak. But most importantly, it's raising these kids, man. I love it. Sounds great. On Sunday, hey, you're going to be on the field. You're the honorary captain. You're going to hear the crowd again. Um, as you think back, what is Philadelphia like as a sports city, as a football city? Man, I just, uh, as far as I can remember, like every time I hear that Rocky song play in the beginning of, you know, before kickoff, it gets the juices going. And every time I hear that, I picture Brian Dawkins crawling out of the tunnel, going crazy, being Wolverine. You know, Jeremiah trying to slam in the axe, oh, uh, you know, on the ground. Like it's just those, those moments that once that song comes on, like all the memories from back when we played kind of kicks cre creeps back in. And it makes you want to go out there and still a few snaps. Yeah. Well, listen, on Sunday, um, you'll hear it. Um, just don't try it. Oh, you, yeah. We, we, <laughs> We don't want to see you get hurt now, all right? Jamal Jackson, our, <laughs> our honorary captain for Sunday's game, our salute to service game against the Chargers. And we thank you so much for joining us. Jamal Jackson, great to catch up with you. Not a problem. Thanks a lot, Dave. Enjoyed it. Thank you. And that will do it for this episode of the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Thanks so much to Peter Kelly, Julie McLaughlin, Ray Doyle for their work. Thanks to all of you for joining us each and every week. And make sure you're with us as we get into the locker room at Lincoln Financial Field on Sunday for the Instant Reaction Eagles Insider Podcast. Should be a good one. A win gets the Eagles to 4-5, and five, gives them a winning streak, and sets up all sorts of fun possibilities for the months of November and December. I'm Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro. Thanks for joining, everyone. 
Have yourselves a great Eagles day. Fly, Eagles, fly, and go birds. E-A-T-L-E-S, Eagles!